Hey everyone, Shark here. Got a real fun one for you guys tonight. This time we're on Twin Beaches, and we've got Reekly playing the U.S. Forces up against Hulk Smash playing Wehrmacht, right? The two guys' ranks put together barely equal 10, so you know it's going to be epic. And then on Twin Beaches with the high resources, it's going to be a lot of fun and feature a lot of armor. Casting this one with me is my boy Spades. He does things. He knows stuff about the game. It's awesome. Anyway, that's all I got. On to the match. So, starting out, we got Reekly here in red at the bottom of the screen, the west side of the map. And he's going double scout opening straight into his barracks. And then opposite him in blue is Hulk Smash with the very meta triple pioneer start. Uh, and going for his tier one as well. Look at that aggressive placement on the infantry company. You love to see it's it. It's right on the edge of the border. <laughs> like, just uh, right outside his own border. It somehow clips through, just making sure he gets as close to reinforcement range as possible to his cutoff. That is true optimization right there. Reekly locking in the armored battle group uh, and the veteran crews. He's got a rifle squad on the way. You gotta imagine a jeep is coming here. Um, and Hulk smash going for a grenadier. I don't think we're going to see anything too off meta just based on the start here. Um, other than the three pioneer start, which is super aggressive. This yeah, the high capping power and the, the quick capping times, as well as the cheap reinforcement costs, while it's a highly prone to losing a unit model, it totally gets you a massive territory control edge early game. Which is an interesting approach, because this map has a higher fuel than normal. So, um, yeah, for each player, they have the ability... The average 25 fuel just based on the layout with an even split which i think normally you see 20 is the standard um and then on the munition side high as well so this map tends to play out just a little bit differently uh than the other 1v1 maps and uh and you really have to work hard to gain a fuel advantage over your opponent Regally does well to balance it out with getting the second scout squad early game just to increase his capping power. Scouts are top tier cappers. Yeah, I I really like that on this map. If you uh the the scout into engineer opening for USF, I think feel like is very slow and sluggish. Um he could have gone assault engineers, and I, actually we've seen him do it before. But look at the micro here. He's keeping the scouts at range with these pioneers where they do well. And then obviously they get the uh, the capping speed advantage. Wow. And this is this is this map and the uh, the fuel uh, income infantry support center already being teched for Reekly. So normally you see players focus a little bit more on army composition early. He says, screw that. I want to get my ISC up. I mean, the fact that he went Armored Battle Group shows that he is trying to churn out a vehicle as soon as humanly possible. It would make sense. Although, I feel like Armored Battle Group has suffered in the latest patch with the nerfs to the light vehicles. It certainly has. Uh, a lot of people have just foregone the ability to make Greyhounds and Chaffees and have, you know, gone support Weapon Center. Yeah. So, very polite infantry combat here at the start. Right, engagements across the map. Uh, Pyo is upgraded with flamethrowers. We're going to chase down these scouts. And now Hulk Smash going for his tier one veterancy upgrade. Meanwhile, Reekly gets a third rifle squad, and now the captain hits the field. Uh, these scouts basically get hemmed in by uh, pioneers forced to retreat. I am surprised that he took the upgrade on the pioneers with a flammenwerfer on the side that doesn't have a grenadier on it. Yeah. I wonder what the thought process was there. Oh, this scout squad may go down. Uh, fortunately, the Grenadier is back off. And then Reekly uses his next 25 fuel to tech uh, med tent. I mean, yeah, his rifles are pretty low on health here, so that'll save him some manpower. Okay. Veterancy just hit the field for Hulk Smash. It did. And meanwhile, we got grenade tech and rapid production or fast deploy for Reekly. He, I mean, the thing is, he hasn't had outstanding fuel control, right? Like, Hulk Smash has had the advantage here, but it still feels like, especially once he recaps this fuel point uh, on the south side, he'll be able to really crank out uh, a couple of vehicles. 
Now, I mean, the meta for Wehrmacht right now is to go uh, Panzer Grenadier Company with a Stummel, especially to deal with, you know, the rifle, the hordes of riflemen. So maybe it's he's chassis. within that window. He just hasn't actually constructed the building. He hasn't made a decision yet. And yeah, he's got tons of fuel now, too. I think he's trying to save himself some room to decide. He's going to push here on this fuel point with the scouts and the rifles. I would have expected... Oh, he's going Luftwaffe Company. I would have expected him to retreat these rifles sooner to get them healed up. Nice grenade. And then meanwhile, scouts in the center force off by the flame pyos. Didn't let him get the decap. Yeah. Oh man, these scouts. Um, they're pretty high health. They'll probably be okay. Yeah, they're gonna be fine. Rifles uh sparring with grenadiers on this fuel point on the southeast side of the map. Rifles decap it, but they're probably gonna have to bounce uh before they bleed too much. Now pioneers coming up on their flank here. The flamethrower is so good right now. Um, it is, and with the rebalancing changes on Pioneers, they do just a little bit more damage, making them all that more viable. Yeah, this rifle squad in some serious danger. Our barracks are under attack. Gave them a oh, the flanking, to the flanking to speed. Home. I was wondering what that was. That's uh, that's really smart. Um, I wouldn't. Does it stack with the retreat speed benefit? You know, just looking at it. It does. Okay. I know I've, I've seen it with the rifleman sprint to chase down snipers. Good cutoff play by Hulk Smash here. And I, like, I'm really impressed with how aggressive. I mean, look at the map. Um, he took really good map control while the rifles were on retreat to heal up. Regally going to push back Speaking into the center. Vehicles, we've got the 2 2 1 coming out. Yeah. And a squad of Jaegers. Regally building his motor pool now. Oh, grenade on retreat. Beautiful grenade, and the rifles pick up the uh, the pioneer squad. So nice toss. Uh, I can't recall in recent history my riflemen performing that well in the past. <laughs> I'm gonna. It's, it was the height advantage. Ah, of course. Yeah. Uh, two, two, one here. Not going for the upgrade yet, but of course it doesn't need to. And now Hulk Smash getting his tier two veterancy upgrade as well. These veterancy upgrades really pay for themselves quickly, especially with the, the vet one abilities they unlock. Um, although the, the biggest abuse of it is the Panzer Grenadier automatic fire. Oh, are we gonna see a breach here? No, because the Grenadiers just get out of the building and then throw a grenade back. <laughs> Does that breach mechanic these work? <laughs> Oh, it's broken. It just takes so long. Like, I... In, when Co 2 came out, I was like, man, they need to add a breach mechanic to clear some of these units from garrisons. <laughs> but the way it's implemented right now... Oh, uh, I know it's something that Mirage cares about fixing. It's just going to be very difficult to manage. Alright, so Jaegers have upgraded the G43 package. So they're going to scale really well against these rifles, but what they are not prepared for is this Greyhound that's about to hit. Now, the 221... Yeah, Greyhound will head right over to that scout car. Yeah, the 221 doesn't have the Panzer Books upgrade on it just yet. My captain unable to get the decap. Greyhound Looks like pushing. this Greyhound's taking these piggies all the way back yeah. home. Now, the 221... Oh man, Pioneer's gone. The Panzer Books is about to pop for that 221, so smart for the Greyhound to back up. Uh, and then also a Flak 30 coming out. And that will do a lot of. Oh, another good grenade on retreat. Just a little premature. So won't get many. Uh, we'll do some damage, but not drop any models. The Greyhound on the retreat path as well. Now, no MSC, so you're not going to see the canister rounds. Oh, but man. Greyhound just doing tons of work. Another? Is that another breach? With a counter grenade. <laughs> you love to see it. In the lighthouse, you never see it. And then they just stand there. And now, now they're getting they're jacked up by the grenadiers. Oh, are they bugged? This I rifle so. squad may go down. Oh, now they're in, and now they're retreating. That is a shame. That's terrible. 
Well, I hope Rick Lee learned something from this play experience. <laughs> yeah, m mad respect. All right, here's the flak 30. Working on these scouts, and that... So, worth noting, because I didn't realize this initially, the flak 30 has to use its veteran ability to suppress. It doesn't suppress by default. Yes, sir. And now Hulk Smash has chosen Luftwaffe. Looks like he's uh, working towards the volunteer, the Luftwaffe reinforcement for the manpower hacks here. Another squad of Jaegers coming out. You gotta imagine they're gonna have Shreks on them. Early retreat on the Jaegers and the Greyhounds. Smart. Yeah. Smart. The 221 and the Flak 30 not in position to really cover just yet. It's unfortunate that the 221 still shoots infantry even when marked on vehicle only. Yeah, there have been a. Oh, mine hit. No engineers on the field. The 221 could pursue this Greyhound here. The, I don't uh, think he knows about the AT gun. He, he, well, the Pioneers have almost certainly seen it. They get the extra vision range. Engineers on the way out for Reekly. Uh, he was teching BARs, but I think he canceled it to get the engineers out. Oh, nice grenade. Does a, a bunch of chunk damage, but doesn't knock down the grenadiers. They're going to back up and heal. They'll press their med kit button and they'll be full health in no time. Yep. Alright, engineers make it out. BARs on the way. A third? Really has bled quite a few of his VP points. Yeah, he's down. He's down a little bit. Um, he's also losing on KD, and that's about to get worse because you have a third Jaeger squad on the way. The second hasn't chosen like a weapon specialization, but even with the Shreks, uh, the Jaegers just do really well against rifles. We do have a Shrek upgrade on one of them. I just see the G40. Oh, he's working on the Shrek on one of them. I it's see coming. it. Yep, yep. He's committed. The enemy is stealing our munitions point. Greyhound back at full strength. Hulk Smash now floating a ton of fuel. And so... What do you think? I mean, the problem with the Werbelwind, he knows... Actually, he doesn't know necessarily that Reekly has gone armored. He might have been able to guess from the Greyhound coming out at that one. That would be his only indicator. Yeah. Oh, man. Those rifles taking a ton of damage. One model left, and the Jaegers with the Shrek pick it up. So, good, uh... Nice pick up there from Hulk Smash. And now... Alright, so he's not going to go for the Werble. He's going to go for Tier 4 instead. 221 applies some pressure to the Greyhound here. Man, yeah, these Jaegers... The... Reekly's getting a third rifle squad. But they are just not going to scale well against the Jaegers. Uh, unless he can invest in survivability or uh, advanced logistics. Which he hasn't had... His fuel control hasn't been so good that I think he can go that route. In fact, if I'm him, I'm a little concerned about seeing a Panzer IV or a Brumbear very soon. You know, if you see Luftwaffe Company and there's not a Whirlwind out by like the 12 minute mark, then you gotta start, in my mind, being afraid of you know, the Tier 4 buildings from the Wehrmacht. Something to pay attention to here is you'll notice that Hulk Smash went with another Shrek upgrade, and you might ask why when there was only the Greyhound on the field. Well, he's already got the infantry game on lockdown, so the only thing that could potentially disrupt the flow of combat for him right now is another vehicle. So he's and just simply providing himself an insurance policy, if you will. Yeah, and speaking of which, the Scott has just hit the field. Oh man, these scouts taking a ton of damage. They back away. Keeping the Grenadiers close to the Jaegers for the potential merge really helpful. Scott focusing on something here in the center. Greyhound comes up to support. Rifles bleed considerably. Have to back up. Now the Greyhound is pushing. Got to be careful Old with Mash the Shrek. Just there. hit his stride as well. He just hit up his 25% uh, manpower hacks. Yeah. So, what this bleed is just not gonna feel 
as satisfying for the American Spirit. Wow, that Shrek shot was terrible. He missed by like 50 meters. Oh, this rifle squad could be at risk here. Interesting grenade though. I think he expected the Aegis to retreat. Now, Black 30 and Jaeger Shrek Squad moving up. Brumbear being built. Now, and this oh. NA and this Scott have done lots of HP damage, but there we go. There's, there's a nice little chunk down. The problem is the slow projectile speed on that Scott. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, he's getting them low. Yeah. Oh, two more. Excellent chase. One. Nice. It's got to be an attack round. Greyhound gets a foul for its efforts. The scout is going to push and try to finish this Jaeger squad. Which you got to think is the right idea. He went for it and got it. Nice. The Shrek is fair game, though. Yeah, it's just going to get picked up. Oh, now the Scott goes down to the 2-2-1. Two, two, Greyhound Fine. trades it out. And now Brumbear on the field. I don't know if you're Reekly, are you okay with that trade? Two Jaeger squads and a 2 2 1 for a Scott? I mean, that's, a good, that's, a, that's pretty good. It has certainly evened up the infantry combat for him. Because now those three rifles won't feel uh, as overpowered by the Jaegers and the Grens here, but they will feel overpowered by this Brumbear. Yeah, that Brumby is uh, fairly fast given the army composition that Hulk Smash did have. Yeah, it's it's this map and then the excellent fuel control. Oh, the combination of the Flak 30 and the Brumbear does a ton of damage. And actually, this captain is in danger too. Just a single AT gun on the field. One more under construction. But the M1 anti tank gun, not a super effective counter to the Brumbear. Oh, Rifle Squad getting pushed off by uh, Grenadiers. He put a, the Shrek on the Grenadiers, which I would almost rather see another Jaeger Squad tech a, a Shrek and then pick up that one and get a double Shrek Squad for maximum potency. It would be reminiscent of the olden days of the Panzer Shrek Grenadiers, uh, Panzer Grenadiers from Code mm -hmm. 2. Mm-hmm. Which is actually, a, I think, a much more balanced unit than the Jaeger Shreks now. Oh, these engineers are in real trouble. Oh, man. Greyhound takes some damage. Brumbear shrugs off. One AT gun shot. The second penetrates and does some damage. Scouts forced off by Jaegers in this watchtower here. This has been uh, pretty spicy so far. And I think Hulk Smash continues to be in a great spot. But with his battle group choice, he's going to be flush on manpower. But his late game armor is essentially Panzer IVs and, and Brumbers, which in enough force can be very potent. Um, but against easy eights, there's some risk there. It's only if Reekly can establish them. Yeah. Yeah, he's got six command points available. I think he is waiting to figure out if he has the fuel to build the tank depot before he decides if he wants the production version of the EZ-8 or the call-in. Oh man, Brumbear just ignoring shots from the AT gun. In all honesty, like, I think that's probably fair. The front armor should allow it to shrug off 57 mil rounds like that, but the side armor on the Brumbear and a lot of the vehicles, honestly, I think it's a little strong right now. Oh, nice flank from the flag, the Flak 30, doing a ton of damage to the AT gun crew. The rifle squad's gonna push in on it, and it's gonna back up. Engineers on the flank, using the flanking maneuver from the captain to get past the grenadiers. Oh man, rifle squad almost goes down to the broom bear. So the rifle is able to buy some space and some time by pushing through the center, but they bleed for it considerably. Given the distribution of Reekly's command points, since he didn't go with strength and steel and he hasn't picked up for a machine, it's most likely we'll be seeing some call-in uh, easy eights. Well, you say that, he just started building the tank depot. So... He's got me. <laughs> there you go. He's Yeah, <laughs> he's got the production and war machine. And he went for field repairs and not the wrecker. So unfortunately, everybody, 
no record play this game. Um, that's a that makes me sad. Uh, it big, is an entertaining unit. It is. It's so much fun when when it works. Hmm. But understandable. All right, Greyhound pushing up on these grenadiers here. Good kiting. Wow. And he must have. He must get different Greyhound crews than I do because. When I get a Greyhound, they normally fire straight into the dirt, but it has gotten quite a few kills. Yeah, they're just coming off a night in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, don't know how to shoot. Oh, man. The, the Flak 30 when well microed is just nasty. Um, and using the veterancy ability to suppress. Oh, Rifleman on the flank. Nice use of the flanking maneuver by the captain. Looking like a D crew. Yeah. Although they're going to pay for it oh and this retreat path is not going to be friendly but fortunately the their teeth. yeah the grenadiers are just too low health to really force the issue now hulk smash going for a panzer 4 to complement the brum bear brum bear on the way out and now we're seeing the tier 4 veterancy as well Man, Reekly, the problem, he's got good fuel right now, but he's bleeding uh, considerably, and that's keeping him from getting some of his armor out. And then Hulk Smash, looks like he's going to get a, a forward bunker. I'm almost positive that'll be uh, the med bunker. So he's going to have lots of free manpower moving forward. Oh, this rifle squad is in trouble. Push up on a Panzer IV with a Jaeger and a Gren squad in support. Greyhound moves up, but not doing a whole lot there. Nice dodge on the grenade. On the opposite side of the map, Brumbear, supported by some German infantry, pushing on the rifles. They force them away from that victory point. Scouts and captain on the flank, but that won't be a problem. It's actually going to be a repair bunker and not a medical bunker. Well, that actually, the placement makes e even more sense. So I like that. It's behind a, a sight blocker too, so not easy to get the 57 mils up to take a shot at it. I thought he would place the medical bunker forward because it increases the the casualty pickup and reinforcement range. But yes, sir. That that does make sense. Man, the problem these rifles without a hard counter to these German vehicles. These rifles are just going to bleed as they try to move around the map and just have to eat tank rounds and coax fire. And Riegli has been under such uh, stringent restrictions with his manpower, he hasn't been able to purchase advanced logistics. Yeah. He's got the... Well, he had the fuel for it. Easy 8 hits the field. And he really needs efficient play from this Easy 8. Greyhound hits triple vet. So that... It's pretty impressive to have a, a Greyhound still alive at the 23 minute mark. Oh man, well, really Pine! Like to see they got just evaporated. No <laughs> yeah. wonder he got that repair bunker. All three of them pioneers from the start are all but yeah. gone. Oh, this Black 30 is about to be flanked. Probably knocked out here. Fortunately, it's got a very chunky crew. Jaegers pop out. The Grens can't merge or recrew without risking uh, getting knocked out. And actually, rifles on the flank here. The Jaegers are going to recrew the Flak 30 so it's not destroyed. The rifles may try to clear it again. Oh, Greyhound in serious danger. There's the Shrek. Vet 3 Greyhound knocked out. Easy aid here to support. Man, the penetration on the Shrek is just so high. Oh, Jaeger squad. Very low health. Chase them. They're gonna get away with two models, but they might. Reekly might pick, pick up, up this thing. Yep, there it goes. Now the Brumbear shows up, and this rifle squad could be at risk. Was it easy? It's, oh, he's thinking about what to destroy here. The Jaeger squad on the flank, actually, really threatening these AT guns. Double AT guns trying to help clean up this Black 30. Yeah, there it goes. Knocked out. <laughs> and now you've got scouts coming up to help these engineers with the Jaegers. 
despite all those infantry reserve manpower hacks Hulk Smash has, if he doesn't have any squads, it doesn't really pay off. Yeah, while well, Reekly is uh, really punished some of these long retreat paths, may get another pickup here. Oh, uh, he's actually got to be very careful because the Fals will definitely engine crit. Uh, Captain off map barrage coming in. And so fortunately for Reekly, uh, both of the Axis vehicles also really low on health. Unfortunately, the second Panzer IV just hits the field. But if if Hulk Smash doesn't start to pick up, if he if he can't knock out this easy eight, Reekly is gonna have a second one here in about 30 seconds. And once they start to mass up, it becomes really, really dangerous and difficult to force them away. What Hulk Smash does have now in his favor is the Luftwaffe Loiter, the dreaded skill planes, which if you were to catch these AT guns out of position, at the very least you could clear those and create some space to do some damage to these easy 8s What do you think here, Spaze? What's what is Hulk Smash's play? Well, Hulk Smash is in full-on recovery mode at this point. He has lost about four squads, which is just devastating. Uh, his overextension is ca has caused his massive lead to turn into recovery mode for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, it's wild. He has a significant advantage. Oh, they found the repair bunker. Significant advantage in KD and in VPs. Oh, engineers, they think about throwing the satchel, but the P4 forces them away. Now so The phrase that resonates with me for Hulk Smash Current's predicament is that he snatches defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> I don't think it's quite that bad yet. Now you've got the P4s supported by the Jaegers and the Brumbear, and they are able to push back these easy eights who take a fair amount of chunk damage. Man, Volley comes in on the Jaegers but doesn't do a ton of damage. T4 penetrates and then takes around for its trouble. Now, meanwhile, Reekly is. He's trying to recover some of this VP pressure. Because he's still on the bleed here. Uh, the Jaegers, even with just coming out bet one. Uh, doing fairly well against the rifles, even with the Shrek upgrade. Although, man, the chunk damage from the Easy Ace is just so potent. The yeah, force the to retreat. Royce of medium tanks. Yeah. Yeah, literally with the suspension on it as well. And, and now Hulk Smash side teching Panzer Grenadier Company. I like the thought process. You get get a couple pack 40s out, maybe. I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah, there's no purpose to a Nebelwerfer. Uh, that wasn't, that's not going to buy him much. Yeah. It would be a poor investment. Or a, a Stug, maybe. Um, field repairs, which allows these easy 8s to repair while relocating across the map. And so Reekly... Yeah, that's, uh, that's the long play. You know, picking up field repairs, that's the, that's the Chad decision. Yeah, and I mean, that's going to be his only real munition sink. The herd easy eight on the way. Excellent fuel control. He's got four of the five uh, fuel points. He's going to be able, as long as he doesn't bleed too much manpower, to continue to replace these vehicles. Oh, big volley comes in from the 57s. Rumbear only takes one penetration, is able to back up. I mean, if I'm Reekly with this fuel advantage in the pop cap, maybe think about getting the weapon support center out so you can grab some of the, uh... Oh, man. The Jaegers take so much damage. Uh, get it like a med half-track out to keep your AT guns topped off. Oh, a couple good mass of easy aids. Yeah. Devastating to deal with. Uh, this is about to be... Now... When does the loiter drop? Because I think that's the only way out of this. Right Here now. it is. Right now. That's the panic loiter. Yeah. Does it? It'll do minimal damage. It'll just zone him out temporarily, buying old smash. Maybe yeah. A minute. That's basically, you're exactly right. 
he basically said, get off my front door. <laughs> get off my porch, you kids. Right? He said, back up and give himself some time to repair, to recover, and to reestablish himself here in the center. From an armor perspective, I feel like the fight is relatively fair, right? Two P4s and a Brumbear, but you've got the infantry support. But with all those lost squads, Reekly just has... I feel like he just has more mobility. Oh, these poor pioneers, they didn't get the uh, Minesweeper upgraded and end up finding one. So it looks like Hulk Smash gonna move back for repairs. Man, mine's going off everywhere. You got 54 munitions, Hulk. You invest in a sweeper on your one remaining Pioneer squad. That is a rebuild, by the way. It is. It, it very much is. And if he's not I careful, he'll have to rebuild it again. You got rifles moving up on it right now. Hulk's Soon to be six, Pioneer. Oh, yeah. nope. He got it out. Now we see survival training coming out for Reekly. I like this. I think this is a good investment. Especially because right now he's pop capped. Survival training and advanced logistics are going to help him recover in case he has a couple sloppy engagements in the late game. Meanwhile, I I appreciate the approach from Hulk Session. Wow, look at the shots just bounce. Uh... Trying to maintain the VP pressure. But Regley gonna cap this northern VP. This is the, uh... Someone else was talking about this the other day. With this map set up, with the, kind of the two and one VP distribution, it's very difficult to get a triple cap on, which means that you have these games that go a little bit longer. Uh, and then requires, like, good late game strategy and play. Oh man. Aggressive push here. And he's triggered. Are those the HE rounds? And Brumbear takes a bunch of hits, but actually the easy eights force to, to bounce away at the risk of getting knocked out. I mean, he's in target for getting another 15 munitions to hit his free repairs button. Yeah. Yeah, he'll get it back, but they just, they couldn't commit to the push uh, and punish the Brumbear for getting caught. But two, I mean, he's done a good job of soaking up map control and applying some VP pressure. Here's the big push now. Jaeger's moving up in the center. MG42 out. I think that's smart. The captain gonna throw the off-map barrage on it. Another pack 40 coming. I guess that is the advantage. He's kind of reinvesting Hulk smashes. Oh, rifles knocked out as the building collapses. Smart play using the pack 40s to facilitate that. Uh, yeah, AT guns have a unique alternative purpose of removing buildings from the game much more efficiently than vehicles or artillery pieces. Mm hmm. Well, higher fire rate and 40 extra damage per shot. So, makes sense. That, uh, that pop cap freed up. Reekly's trying to figure out what to do with it. He had a Hellcat queued up there, but looks like he's going to get a uh, replacement rifle squad instead. This is looking like a series of wipes. Potentially that Grenadier is going to evaporate in a few seconds. Oh, yeah. And these Jaegers caught out of position, yeah. and they haven't left What's yet. What's happening, Hulk? Oh, no. Oh, Hulk. And he still has the Grenadier there. Yeah. Actually, the Jaegers... It is a nope. Nope, there it goes. <laughs> Knocked out. And now the Grens. That and he's smart. He's focusing on the unit rather than the tank. He doesn't yep. care. Oof. <laughs> Two more wipes for Reekly. Overextension. But Hulk Smash MG42, good placement, forces the rifles back. Now, maybe we're going to see. Yeah, Reekly's now trying to knock out the building with the AT guns. I hope Hulk sees it in time. And say, I like his approach using the team weapons. I feel like the AT guns, uh, the Pack 40s especially, going to do better against these Easy 8s um, than the Jaeger Shreks will at this point. And now, going for the Tier 3 Officer's Quarter, so we're about to see the Grand Slam of uh, Veterancy upgrades for Wehrmacht here. Cool One of our strategic points is under 
<laughs> if you get all three, does it like just give you immediate vet two on everything? All, all four, <laughs> maybe. Or maybe it unlocks a, a tiger ace from the eastern front. No further reinforcements will be necessary. <laughs> oh man, that was cool in concept, but frustrating in execution. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so Reekly's got Hulk Smash backed up again. A couple of whiff shots here. Jaeger's on the flank. Ooh, two good side penetrations from the 57 mil under the Brum Bear. Wow, two more at real risk of going down here. Easy Eight's got to land one more shot. It's going to eat a Shrek. One more shot. It finds the Brum Bear. Awesome pickup for Reekly. Now here comes the Loiter again to get off my porch. Oh. And the Easy 8 smoked. But I think if you're Reekly, you'll take that trade considering the resource yeah, balance. Yeah, still, still worth the trade. Take cool. that any day of the week. One Panzer IV at risk of going down. But this other... Oh, Easy 8 gets knocked out first. It'll trade out. Replace it. Easy. It hits the field. Pack 40 shots coming in. Oh, the satchel does a ton of damage to the P4, but not enough to kill it. Oh, that Vet 3 Easy 8. Get out of there, bro. He wasn't feeling it. He Ooh. wasn't feeling it. He didn't want to risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, well, not with those Pack 40s there. Wow. Couple of haymakers thrown there, but Reekly floating a ton of resources. He's gonna be right back to three Easy Eights. And Hulk's Easy Eights are cheaper. They they are cheaper than the Brumbar, which means you would trade one every day of the week if you could. I I don't know. They're the same fuel. Nope, one ten to one twenty. Brumbar. Oh, is the Brumbar one twenty now? Yep. And then it's three hundred and thirty with the war, uh, manpower with the war machine. So. And we're looking at a uh, 400 for the Brumbar. Yeah, and two Panzer fours, just not a not a hard counter. And this triple vet P4 potentially caught out of position. Pack 40s move up. Now this easy eight here on the flank needs to be careful. Good shot comes in. So the easy eights back up. Now Captain here to force the issue. And then 257 mils moving all the way up. They are pressed right up against the nose. They, uh, he, he is not being shy with them 57s. Yeah, but Hulk Smash was able to get a little bit of VP pressure. So Reekly now down to under 100 VPs. He's, we're actually going to be dead even right here because his rifles move off to challenge the Jaegers. Oh no, not another Jaeger wipe. Two easy eights and two rifles. Another over adventure. With the grenade. Oh, they're done. There's no way. It's a miracle. Wow. Is it MG Christmas? I didn't know it was December. <laughs> MG42 shows up. Push the rifles away. Rifle, uh, the Jaegers get away. But now, Captain and Scouts are going to push on this other VP. Reekly really trying to get a triple cap here. And Hulk Smash, just from an army composition point of view, has been kind of on the back foot. I feel like that a triple cap would really put the screws on. If it wasn't for population cap, there'd be a fourth easy eight. Yeah. Yeah, population cap, honestly, is the only thing that has kept Hulk Smash in this game. You could say Reekly's bravest error was getting fast deploy instead of getting <laughs> the steel. Yeah. Oh, P4, they're gonna risk it. Oh, the pack 40s. But no follow up. Oh, a couple attempted shots uh, with attack round, but the uh, Easy 8's gonna back out. So Hulk Smash prevents the triple cap, but on a solid double here, and that's still gonna tick down those VPs fairly quickly. Hulk Smash is ace in the hole here as these two pack 40s and that Reekly has no good means to displace them or decrease them. Well, especially as they vet up. Now Reekly going for advanced logistics because he's pop capped. Um, oh man, what if he went for the big mine and started throwing those down? 
you could potentially really punish because his map control is so good you could you could end up really knocking out these p4s as they push hulk smash just bleeding a lot of manpower unfortunately he's got plenty of fuel you Hulk smash has been on the metaphorical back foot for quite some time now full-on recovery mode because of multiple overextensions yeah did he tech the standard healing like base healing no he did not uh, he did that recently like within the last two minutes but for 30 plus minutes he hadn't had it he hasn't had any healing other than grenadiers yeah i i mean you'd, you'd like to see the med bunker right with the casualty clearing but look he's he's gonna get vp pressure back on weekly here the jaeger's too resilient for the scouts <laughs> these easy aids use an attack ground to get after this repair bunker and then changing their mind Working on the infantry company there. Weekly using these uh, engineers to try to cap this VP. Oh, pack 40s on the flank with the P4. And now here comes the Easy 8 blob supported by the 57s. Oh, these Jaegers, they gotta get out. Oh, they're not going home. Annihilated. Just the. Maybe neither is this MG42. No, it is not. This is savage. And with this pack 40s out of position, the easy aids can continue to roll. We see is the P4s. For base inspection? Oh no, he's just still eating the MD42. Man, Hulk Smash now. So few munitions that he. Uh, there, there's no loiter coming to save the day this time. And the magic uh, on the move field repairs. Another P4 coming out, supported by three of the pack 40s. Hulk Smash has to catch these easy eights out of position. And and I just don't know. Like Reekly is too too good to get caught like that. He has so much momentum, so much security. Those triple easy eights all vetted up. Yeah. Now these pack 40s. Ambush bonus. Focusing on the triple vet easy eight. But the rifles, this is the problem. So many Jaegers have died. Rifles able to just push up. They clear one of the pack 40s, one of the vet two crews. The double 57s clean up the pack 40. Yeah. Never to be screwed again. Rifles take a lot of damage, but don't get knocked out. And this one easy. Here comes gonna... the dreaded triple cap. Yeah, easy. It's just gonna sit on this VP. Wow, I am is unbelievable. Reekly's ability to spread the map here. I'm having a hard time just keeping everything on screen. All right, here we go. Pack 40 moving up, supported by P4 and Jaegers with Shrex. One of these Shermans is actually in poor shape. They can find it. Oh no. The Salvo. Those Jaegers is at risk of going down now. They throw a smoke down in front of the AT guns. I love that play. Rifles could go down to the P4s here. Ooh, one P4 knocked out. AT guns now relocate. Oh man. Looks like he's trading an easy eight. Yeah, pack 40, but it doesn't shoot. And now the other easy eights move up. Both pack 40s on the same spot. They take a ton of damage. Oh, one easy eight goes down. That's a small price to pay. He can rebuild that in heartbeat. Yeah, but both of the pack 40s are cleared. So now Hulk smash down to two. Uh, Panzer four is just on their last legs. Pack 40s knocked out, and the triple cap about to be reestablished here. And meanwhile, Reekly rebuilding that third EC8. He's oh, got manpower man. and fuel for days. Yeah. Oh, this does not look good. Another pack 40 being built, but the repair bunker just not fast enough. And now the off map barrage coming in. Repair bunker on its last legs as not well. Easy. It's going to clean it up. Yeah. And that, that's got to be it. There's that's no way. Yeah, to repair these tanks. 
It's See, just the speed and the time left in the match on a triple cap. By the time he full repairs him, he won't be able to decap two points. Yeah, 110. He's basically got two minutes of VPs left at this point. Uh, this P4 goes hold down while it's repairing to give it some extra durability. But he is shoved all the way back. And he's still three minutes away from another loiter being available. And to think Regley's just going to sit idly by and not torture him and twist the knife. <laughs> yeah, not, not going to happen. Oh, man. Here comes the twisting Here it comes. of the knife. Oh, P4 knocked out. Pioneer's almost cleared. Jaeger is yeah, the last down. hope of any kind of repairs. Oh, goodness. And Hulk Smash building a sniper. That had to be a misplay. <laughs> had to be. I would love to see Sniper lead a comeback at the 45 minute mark. The the, uh, the tank sniping uh, ability. I believe it was Jarman Kell from Command and Conquer Generals that could uh -huh. snipe the crew out. The last P4 goes down. Pack 40 trying for a moral victory over these easy eights. Cool. One more hit. Oh, but it whiffs the shot. And that's going to be it. There's no way. Yeah, he throws the GG. Valiant effort to hang out in there as long as he did. Almost, almost flipped the script. Almost won on VPs here. But he's going to surrender. GG's to both of them. Yeah, well done. Okay, so starting out with Hulk Smash on the build order. And, and a couple things here that are going to be kind of wonky because he had to replace a lot of units. The build order looks a little bit weird. So instead I'll focus on kind of the major build decisions and the things I think are really relevant. So first off, three pioneer opening into three grenadiers. Um, interesting, right? Works out for him initially. He has a lot of map control and he creates a lot of VP pressure on Reekly. He goes tier one officer's quarters. That's going to be a theme <laughs> throughout this game. And then he goes tier two, the Luftwaffe company. It's a 2 2 1 out, um, which when Reekly only has three rifles on the field, this is actually a pretty good counter. And then it gives him the flexibility of upgrading the Panzerbuchse later on to counter the Greyhound. Then he goes into Jaeger squads, um, gets his tier two officers' quarters up, so they all get veteran C1, gets a Flak 30 team. I like this build composition. He ends up selecting the Luftwaffe battle group here. Um, doesn't really use much of it outside of the manpower cheats uh, a little bit later on. Um, and then gets two more Jaeger squads. So this build, um, very potent, right? And the Shreks do a lot of good work early game. The big thing that he struggles with is he's not able to actually finish off um, the Greyhound. He does want wipe one rifle squad early, but he just doesn't get the big hits that he's looking for. Uh, and then he becomes uh, kind of susceptible to that later on. So you're going to start to see he's, he's really rebuilding a lot of lost units. Um, gets his tier four out. First thing he builds is a Brumbear. Followed up by a Panzer IV, replaces one of his lost Jaegers, um, gets a Tier Four officer's quarters out, uh, gets a repair bunker, which is smart because he's lost a couple of pioneers at this point, and then gets the med station up, uh, upgrade back at his headquarters to help manage the manpower bleed against the rifles. Gets a second P4, and then he continues to invest in the Jaeger squads. Now, this is the part of the game where I think he, um, this is really smart, and I wish I saw people do this more often. He side texts to Tier Three. And he gets a couple of pack 40s out. And these do a lot of work for him late in the game. You know, unfortunately not enough to get him the win. But it's a good counter to the easy 8s. Um, who really pretty easily counter the Panzer 4s. And then the Jaegers, right, they're constantly getting run down on retreat. So even with the Shreks, they're not a great counter to the easy 8s. But the pack 40s do quite a bit of damage. The problem is he's so far behind on resources and weekly spends so much time pop capped. That for every easy eight he knocks out, another one just immediately hits the field. And then the last thing I wanted to highlight, he gets a tier, the tier three officer quarters here. So like we were talking about, Grand Slam, uh, all four officer quarters upgrades. Um, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense in the build. You spend a lot of time kind of like pop capped, a lot of excess fuel, uh, and it really helps improve viability late in the game. Um, the only thing I really think here, like maybe... Panzer Grenadiers instead of Jaegers, but like, I, I don't know. I thought he played this fairly well. It just didn't really work out in his favor. Panzer Grenadiers also be susceptible to getting run down by vehicles. They don't have any counter, unlike the Jaegers. Difference is he would have gotten the pack 40s out early, um, and that might have made um, you know, Reekly just a little bit more reticent to chase down like that. Uh, Luftwaffe Battle Group, all right, unlocks Falsch and Pios and LG40, doesn't really use them, does get the manpower reserves. 
Um, he goes for the Recky run. I don't actually remember seeing him uh, use that. He does use the Loiter a couple times. Unfortunately, he's not able to use it in an offensive fashion. Instead, it's kind of like a please save me moment. Like, I need to get these guys off of my chest so I can get out of my base. Um, the way you want to see it used is to, like, just absolutely close an engagement and clobber the enemy, get a couple of decisive kills, uh, and help flip the game in your favor. He was just already on the back foot at that point. And then going over Reekly's build order here, he clearly knew what he wanted to do kind of from the get-go. Two scouts into barracks, uh, armored battle group, three riflemen, infantry support center, super early. Med station grenade package. A lot of his early fuel is going into those initial tech upgrades that make the infantry just a little bit better. But it's worth noting he's also able to build a motor pool and get a Greyhound out. So really good fuel control early using the pressure that the riflemen allow him to generate. And then also the fact that it's twin beaches with an extra um, on average five fuel per player right so you can tech a little bit faster you can you can take some of those those risks uh with teching um then he gets an at gun out he gets engineers to repair his greyhound after it gets uh whittled down by the panzer buxa um upgrades bars replaces a lost rifle gets the m8 scott out i think it's a second at gun really impressive micro of the at guns he has two of them up and they stay crude throughout the game um gets this tank depot and then it's just three Shermans. Come hell or high water, he has three easy eights on the field for the rest of the game. While he's pop capped, he takes survival training and advanced logistics. Um, but the strategy works. The field repairs are brilliant. Um, yeah, going through the battle group here, uh, the veteran C1 on all of his vehicles, the field repairs, he uses it so well, right? The easy eights are able to relocate while they're repairing. Um, really, really well done. No other major munition sinks for him, so it makes a lot of sense. Um, obviously, he goes for Allied War Machine. And then rapid production on the right side, the M8 Scott, and the EZ8 production, uh, which definitely makes sense with the quantity that he's putting out and the fact that um, he can invest in the tank depot and war machine. It allows him to just continually pump those vehicles out with his fuel control at the end of the game. Um, just really, really impossible for, uh, for Hulk Smash to ever really get an advantage there. All right, so now I'm going to grab spades and we'll get into the uh, post-match discussion here. All right, so I'm back here with spades, uh, and yeah, you know, we were chatting about this a little bit uh, off screen, but uh, you have pretty firm opinions on what decided this match, so I'll just kick it over to you. Sure. So the the I would say, like I said during the match, Hulk Smash snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. He was in the driver's seat. He had his manpower hacks online. He had a top quality unit composition and he threw it away with each one of his overextensions. And as soon as those holdout easy eights of just getting that quality over quantity online, um, he just kind of fed Reekly the units that he needed, the wipes he needed, because he didn't need unit damage, because Hulk Smash with the manpower hacks could have handled bleed. That wasn't his problem. It was when he overextended his units piecemeal one by one on each side of the map and just fed those easy eights free and easy kills. Yeah, you know, I, I'll be a little bit, I guess, maybe less controversial about it. I I want to give the credit to Reekly for doing a really good job punishing the overextensions, right? And like keeping the easy eights together in these little like hunter killer packs, which so in the, the recent patch, right? Uh, for example, they nerfed the dingo um, and its ability to hunt down squads by decreasing its moving accuracy, but increasing its burst length, right? So it's still good at chasing vehicles, but less punishing against squads. The easy eight has better moving accuracy than any vehicle in the game, right? It's got the uh, horizontal volume spring suspension. That's what it's famous for, right? It's an easy riding tank plus the 76. So it does a ton of damage. You start to get those together and then you start to take into account the actual map. So very vertical map, long retreat paths and long retreat paths from anywhere, right? It's not like a uh, Toronto coastline where if you're out kind of in on the far axis of approach, you can get really punished. But if you're on the near one, it's not that bad. But here, no matter what, you've got a long run back to headquarters. Uh, and then you just saw the Jaegers get punished over and over and over again for getting caught out of position. Um, so, I, I mean, on, like the biggest thing is like Reekly did a phenomenal job maintaining awareness and then applying pressure. And I, it's one of those things like I, when I try to think about like how to counter it, 
probably mines, right? Um, I I love the decision to side tech and get pack forties out, and it, and Hulk Smash almost turned it around with that on its own, right? Um, but yeah, crazy to see even with the manpower hacks when you lose four Jaeger squads and three Gren squads, like you just can't. That's field presence and manpower investment that you can't come back from because the the manpower hack decreases your reinforcement cost. It doesn't decrease your upfront cost, right? So, um, yeah, that would be the the, the strength and steel, uh, you know, man, uh, you know, vehicle reduction in cost for those easy eights uh, that the Americans got there for Reekly. Yeah, um, and then ironically, you saw Reekly who didn't prioritize the manpower hacks until late in the game when he actually had. Um, he had the spare resources because he had been pop capped. Um, getting the survivability, which is just that that's a really smart upgrade, and I was happy to see him prioritize that over the logistics because he didn't need the reinforcement cost, he needed to keep his rifles on the field, especially once the team weapons started to come out. Right? Being able to push the pack 40s with the rifle squads and just apply so much pressure. Um, yeah, and then. The uh, the field repairs, like you pointed out, like great choice playing for the late game, understanding kind of the calculus there. Um, I would have loved to see a wrecker, but the field repairs m made way more sense in the grand scheme of things. Uh, yeah, on the topic of uh, quality over quantity, or uh, you know, calculating for a late game build or a composition that you know you want uh, versus just playing the field and just trying to you know drain your opponent as quickly as possible. I'm not saying I know which one is a superior strategy and whether or not one wins out in all scenarios, but the idea of having a final end game pick as to what it is that you're aiming for paid off immensely well for Reekly in comparison to the, uh, you know, uh, we'll call it slapdash, uh, quick and fast, down and dirty, Hulk smash style of cap as many points as possible, spread your resources as thin as possible, and Reekly capitalized on those overextensions as much as he could. Yeah, I. so it's really interesting because you think of USF as a really strong early game faction, right? And so from Hulk's point of view, if you've got the VP advantage early, like why not drive it home? Because you're only going to get better in comparison, better units. Now the EZ8 flips that a little bit, uh, like, what do you think? Do you think if he goes mechanized instead of Luftwaffe writing and can throw pan uh, Panthers out there instead of P4s, do you think that makes a difference, or is it too far gone either way? I think the Panther is an excellent contender dealing with the EZ-8. It certainly pushes it back and makes him play more conservatively because it's, you know, a superior mobile anti-tank gun that also can't be punctured by those 57 millimeter anti-tank <laughs> guns. Yeah, and then you know it would have vet one, right? So it would it would have that like mark target ability and debuff the easy eights as they come through. It, it's easy in retrospect, like like we talked about in the cast. There was you know one indicator that armored was coming early until the Scott hits the field, and by that point, um, the Luftwaffe battle group had already been chosen. So. Um, and, and Luftwaffe is a great choice. Uh, the, the the big issue for Hulk Smash was that he didn't bleed squads on manpower. He just lost the entire squad, which effectively invalidates those manpower hacks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, though, still a really good game. Still very high quality play. It was very tight. Um, I think there was probably about the 35 minute mark. Reekly finally kind of went over the top with some of his wipes there, but um, Hulk Smash was still in it uh, until very close to the end. Um, did you have any other parting shots or thoughts from this one? Uh, these two players would play circles around me. I'm grateful to watch <laughs> them play. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Well played. Um, Spades, thanks for taking the time, man. Love having you on. Uh, glad to have you back in the land of the living. And uh, Cheers. Yeah, that's going to do it for us, guys. We'll see y'all in the next one.